Thank you so much for that, Lisa. It is so great to be part of Visionaries Unplugged again. But Mario, I'm very excited for this. So first, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Sherry. Not at all. I do want to start, though, with a little bit and two kind of different chapters of your life. We have, you know, the sports and then we have the investing. And so if we start on football, um, when did you know that you wanted to be a footballer? When was that first love that you realized this was what you had to do with your life? I mean, when I was young, I tried every sport. I mean, tennis, basketball, soccer, everything. Um, but in the end, I think I had the most fun playing soccer. And it was very early. I had all the brother who was playing uh, soccer. So in the end, uh, yeah, it just happened to me. But I was very, very young. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that as the football. And then I want to talk about investing. How did you get into the world of investing? Because we dominate the world of football. We you know, are the superstar is Mario Goetze. And now we're like, I'm going to be an angel investor too. How does that happen? That was uh, more or less by coincidence. I mean, when I started uh, playing professional soccer, I was 17, 18. Um, I had my complete focus on soccer. Uh, but as I grew older, I think five years ago, five years ago when I turned 25, 26, I, I wanted to take more control of the, the other things besides of football, off, off the pitch. And um, yeah, that's, that's when it happened. I was curious, curious about it. Uh, I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand it a bit better. Uh, I want to understand different asset classes. And that's how I got also into uh, into angel investing and, and venture capital. Yeah. Before we dive in, I think, you know, when we look at both, you know, we want to be the best performing investors, athletes we can be. When you think about high performance, what does that word mean to you when you hear the two words high performance? I mean, in general, normally I connect it for me uh, to, to soccer, to, to being an athlete. And I think it's it's more like 100% giving everything. It's a lifestyle. For me, like also playing soccer, it's a lifestyle. It's not only like training for an hour and that's it. It's more like understanding also the other parts. How does it work with recovery, with sleep, with nutrition, all these kind of things. And then this is the foundation for high performance. That's how I view it. And um, yeah, that's how, how I want to live by it and, and try to be as successful as possible on the pitch, but also as an investor, yeah. which is not so easy the second part. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not easy yeah. as an investor you'll also find some very unskilled people yeah. who do very well in investing yeah. um, I, I, I don't, but i don't want to go to that yeah. really which is when we look at skill versus um hard work and discipline and what i mean by that is like how much do you think about the balance between born skill innate mm. brilliance um versus just putting in the hours and doing the hard work mm. how do you balance between the two yeah, it's, I think it's for everyone it's different, but in the end you need to have the talent, a certain skill, a certain talent you need to you need to have to 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 really have the a spark or have an advantage um, in comparison to to other people. But then you also have to work for it. And I think to go, yeah to get to the top is one thing, but to stay there is then another. And so you have to to really ba balance it like in different phases. If you want to come there and if you want to stay there, so you need to have different different um yeah you have to you view it differently and and balance it different in in, in the phases you you, you have in, the, in your life and your career i'm so enjoying this because i just get to ask you all the questions i've always wanted to which is like uh, <laughs> you know, we see you know the big billboards we see the names on, first on the team sheets when you are there and you are on the top do you feel that innate pressure to stay on the top do you feel people coming from beneath you and do you or, or do you kind of just rejoice in being the best <laughs> i mean it's uh, um, there are probably two ways one thing is that uh, i try to to look to myself and like be the best uh, the best version of myself but at the same time i know as an athlete that you have maybe 10 15 years you can compete on the highest level and and that there are younger people coming as i was when i was 17 18 you, you i had a similar situation then so i think you have two ways but in the end it's more like competing with yourself um staying on top being on top um, putting in the work, the energy, but also working on your craft and your talent. And, and yeah, like I said, it's, it's just 10, 15 years and it's very, very short time of your life. And, um, that's why I try to put in, put in as much energy and time, uh, that I have now and to enjoy it. You know, uh, in, in sport and in, you know, investing in business, there are moments of intense pressure, whether it's, you know, the M&A of a company or a fundraising process, or it's a, a massive game. How have you learned to deal with pressure and what works for you in those very big moments just to retain your cool and stay level-headed? I think the most important 
it was a process uh, for sure when I was younger, when I was 17 until now, 13 years later, I view it a bit differently than when I was uh, was very young. But in the end, um, it's experience, it's a process, but I always try to come back to myself and why did I start? Um, how did I start it uh, back then? Um, the fun I have, the fun I had, and this is more the focus I try to, to, to build and to stay with myself and to know what I'm capable of that I've done it also a couple of times that I've I played big games. Uh, I trained hard when I was very young. So all these kind of things I try to 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 memorize and try to visualize for myself and, and stay stay yeah within that uh, within that visualization. Can I ask if, if you go to those difficult phases, say you lose a big game, say you're not picked for the team, entrepreneurs go through the ups and downs of company building. What did you tell yourself as a mental pep talk? to get your head back in the game? I think it's, it's not easy and it's always uh, depends also on the situation where you're in. But um, I try to also visualize it a bit better to, to like, okay, what I have done in the past, how I got there, what, what are the most important traits for myself and try to enjoy even these moments because they are rare. They are like, and in the end, I know that it's only 10, 15 years uh, in which I can play soccer. After that, it's, it's done, you know, and that, that feeling of like, okay, I have only this, this certain amount of time and then to stay there, to visualize that and to understand that it's just also just a game. I mean, in the end, in five, 10 years, when I stop playing, I mean, I hope I have done the best for myself, but uh, there are so many other athletes coming. So are many other soccer players coming and I try to want, I try to want to be the best version of myself, stay uh, in, in, my, in my zone, in my focus and that's how I try to do it. Also with, with the with the thought that uh, one day I, I cannot play anymore. Yeah. I mean, you are still a spring chicken, Mario, so don't worry. Yeah. I'm also astonished at your age and how much younger you look than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you look off your body versus not look off your body. <laughs> um, but, uh, but what I do want to talk about uh, is you, you mentioned there the, the time playing career, 10, 15 years. <laughs> It, with the investing that you know you introduced into your life over time, was that just out of curiosity and wanting to be closer to tech? Do you, would you like to do investing and venture after a career in football? What was the objective? Uh, when I started, it was more like I see a lot of similarities with founders, with teams, how they want to build their their vision, their ideas, and I, I could compare it a bit to to me as an athlete in a team, um, also. Yeah, trying to have the best performance in, in the season. And that's where I, I saw a lot of similarities um, for me as an athlete, but also uh, because I've seen a lot of other athletes in the US, how they started, um, how they are doing it. And yeah, I, I tried, wa wanted to learn it uh, and see them also as a role model in that, in that field. Um, and that's how I got into it. Yeah. Let me show you, what do you think of the differences between the US athletes who are really engaging in the ecosystem and then the European? You also sit within teams. You know, is, what do you see as the differences? I mean, when I see the, the ecosystem in general, I think they have two big advantages. I mean, you have the market for sure in the US and they have a lot of experience. When, when I look back, they, I think they started 20 years ago and in Europe still, if I speak to other athletes or other celebrities, I think they maybe they started five three four five years ago so um they these are probably the the biggest the, the biggest uh yeah differences uh from europe to to the us can i ask you and i'm sorry i'm going off schedule and i'm also <laughs> asking like unfair questions i you know there's footballers in in london and england who listen to my other show and uh have like contacted me because they want to get into investing mm -hmm. and i say great and i'm super happy to help and then the managers get in the way oh. and i have agents and i have and I'm like, oh, this could have been so good. Like, do you see that same problem where you really want to engage, but then there's agents, there's business people in the background who just get in the way? And how do you think about that as a problem? Yeah, I think, yeah, th I think that's, that's a problem because when I want to speak to other athletes or when I want to like engage with them about investing, I, I think you need to be hands-on in it and yeah. you have to understand it. You have to really like also speak to the founders. You have to understand their business you have to 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 be a bit more hands-on and understand the ecosystem build a network uh, but you cannot do it via agents or agencies because in the end you have to you have to make the decision and a lot of things especially if you like investing pre-seed seed you have to speak to the teams and the founders otherwise you 
you you cannot make a proper decision. I think that that that's a big problem. Yeah. No, I I totally agree with you. Um. I, so for footballers today and for other athletes today, what would you advise them? You've been through now, you know, we mm. chatted before, you've invested in a number of funds. You've also made a number of direct investments in companies. What do you know now that you wish you'd known when you started and you would advise them? I would say um, you, you, you need to have like, let's say 10, 20% of your time to invest off the pitch for hundred percent. Like also like get to, get an understanding of business, getting an understanding of your responsibility as an athlete off the pitch. And I think this is very important um, to understand. And, and I wish I had done it 10 years ago, like we have a proper strategy for like media, for venture, for investments, and then build the foundation on that over my career. So start very early, make experiences, um, build a good network of, of trusted people. I think this is probably the, these are probably the most important things. Yeah. When you started investing and when you invest today, do you have a sad investment amount? Do you have a stage that you want to do? Do you have a vertical? When you think about your strategy today, mm. what does that look like? Um, it's in particular, it's like I've, I've built two pillars. The the one is like um, very athlete related, all that kind of stuff like wellness, performance, these kind of things, which is very natural for me as an athlete. The second part is very like uh, media related or more like uh, diverse uh, topics because I I want to invest in the teams and the founder then in the in the themes and topics so this these are my two pillars most of them um, are like pre-seed seed investments and uh, yeah try to be as early as possible do small tickets and then see see how it develops on the way because there are so many obstacles so many things that can happen and then i want to like be a part of the the whole journey and then uh, try to help on that way how do you think about because there's also like limits to how much money one can put to work yeah. and in the world of finance like cash goes fast <laughs> and you need more and more of it. Yeah, over time do you want to scale into funds do you want to collectivize and do and as i said you know when you look at teams and footballers and athletes there is the opportunity to bring collectives together in really cool ways how do you think about being able to scale your capital with the scaling of companies yeah, I think um, it's a big opportunity. I mean, I have different asset uh, asset classes, and I wanted to like also leverage my my brand a bit, and and um, yeah, help help me uh, as an athlete to understand this this um, world of investing. And I think if you see Europe, for example, uh, in comparison to to the US, you have a big market. I think if you try to bring together a few athletes, celebrities, musicians, and then uh, really scale scale these things on a european level i think this could this could be huge and i think uh, i haven't seen it so far um in in europe i think it starts uh, it starts very soon that they try to to um yeah bring together these kind of people and and um yeah have, have the ecosystem also can i ask what was the most challenging thing for you when you started investing when you got into the investing world which elements were like oh that's really confusing or i'm not sure how that works and it took time to really get familiar with i think the first one two two years i mean is out of nothing you come from the soccer field you have to understand this world i mean i, I i'm i'm not, I, I cannot like say that i'm i have the knowledge the time uh, the experience in uh, in venture capital so i have to build a network i have to understand i have to speak to a lot of founders i have to speak to a lot of funds so a business angel to to yeah to to understand it a bit better and um to read to watch youtube videos podcasts whatever um because i i cannot say like i go to training go home and do an investment and, and then it's done so i have to also <laughs> rely on 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 a, on a good network of trusted people Totally rely on the good network. The only thing I'll also say, I would never... And you need to have luck, for sure. <laughs> and then you need to have luck, but also, like it, it, like, it sounds naive. The only thing that matters is the people continuously. Mm. And, like, you can sit down with a 12-year-old f- playing football and talk to them about their training, and it's the same speaking to a founder. Mm. The dedication, the commitment, the resilience is what makes the 12-year-old successful, like what makes the founder successful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And these similarities, if you have it, you have it there in investments, you have it in soccer. And I think these traits are they're very, very important. Yeah. What would you like to do more of when you think about your investing now? Are there are areas where you're like, you know what, I'd really like to spend more time in crypto, in mm-hmm. you name it. Where are you like, I want to I want to be more present here. I think in general, like more present in investing, because if I have my training schedule, my my games, 
um, then also being a father at home and also balancing these different kind of roles at the same time. I think this is very challenging. And that's why I would like to spend more time with my child, more time on the training pitch, but also more time in investing. And um, yeah, uh, and also I, I need to sleep I, a bit. So, <laughs> so uh, but what does a day what does a day look like? Because you? you've got you're like world class athlete now investing now a father as well. Hey, can you just take me inside? How do you fit it all in? Yeah, it's very difficult because I get my schedule for for a week normally from the club. Um, I have my, of course my, all my duties as a father in the morning or in the afternoon when I come home, and then I uh, yeah I try to also uh, take a look. I have a family office which is taking care of a lot of things for me. Um, I have also an agency regarding my media and and marketing and different other aspects of uh, my soccer career. And I, that how I try to balance everything and, and have a full control uh, of, of the topics and pillars I have. Um, but at the same time, I need to understand it and uh, really like push for it to, to, yeah, to build something also for my time after the career. Um, so balancing all these kind of roads. Yeah. You can ask, I think children are the most wonderful thing, um, but also life-changing thing. Yeah. How has becoming a father changed how you think, play, operate as an investor? How has it changed your mindset? I think on every level, because, um, yeah, before, I, th I think you, you, my my life was different before, and then all of a sudden you have a child, you have different responsibility, um, also for the future gen generation. Also for me, understanding uh, what it means to play soccer, and then I see my, my son in the stadium, but also when I do an investment to know that maybe it helps my son uh, in a couple of years. So I, I think it changed everything on, 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 on every level. Also the investments I do and the, the assets class I have, and also building wealth from it for, for, my, for my children uh, at a later stage. Listen, Mario, I want to move into my favorite, which is a quick uh, fire round. Uh, I say a short statement. You give me your immediate thoughts. What are you most proud of when you look back on your career? Is that when you and you think about the many trophies you've won, many games, if you were to say that moment, I'm really, really proud of. I had one moment before the uh, World Cup where I didn't play too much, but I still kept going. You know? And this process, this understanding of like, it's just me like working on myself, competing on the highest level. I think it's not the trophy that I won in the end. It's more like the process that I, I, I worked through diff difficult times. If we have an interview in five years' time, okay, final one. If we have an interview in five years' time, yeah. where is Mario then? What, what, do, what do you want to be doing then? What does that in look five like? Five years, let me think, 35. I, I hope I won't, uh, will be, uh, I want to play in the, the MLS um, in five years. What? I want to. Why do you? Why do you? I am in show. Why do you want to play in the MLS? Just as an experience, I think. Uh, just to understand, like because I have the feeling that they view sports a bit different. They have a better understanding of of, of yeah entertainment of business, and and that's what I want to learn. I'm just curious about their um, their agendas, their yeah their surroundings and situations there. So this for me, it's very interesting. You know? So you want to play in the MLS yeah. in five years' time, and then where's the investor? <laughs> I've built my portfolio. So right yeah. now it's uh, like 32 angel investments, uh, 12 managed funds. So in the end, I want to, to have more on that and maybe uh, yeah, go, go full time. Maybe not full time, but uh, spend more energy and time in venture capital. Listen, Mario, as I said at the beginning, I've wanted to do this for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thrilled that we got the chance to stay. Huge yeah, thanks to the Easter and the Visionaries team. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.